Good day Grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in Functions. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the hyperbola and we're going to start by what we learned about hyperbolas last year. So, so far the standard form that we have is y is equal to a over x plus q. y is equal to a over x plus q and this basically tells us the following. So if we didn't have q, let's pretend q wasn't here, then your a, if it was positive, in fact it doesn't matter what Q is doing, if your A is positive then it means that we're in quadrants 1 and 3. So if your A is positive we're in quadrants 1 and 3 and again 1 and 3. If your A is negative now we're in quadrant 2 and 4. Again we're in quadrant 2 and 4 and again in 2 and 4. So it doesn't matter what our Q does, we are always in quadrant 2 or 4 if your A is negative or in quadrants 1 and 3 if your A is positive. But now if we add the Q in, what does that do? It actually shifts your graph vertically. So if you've got a positive Q, it's going to shift your graph up. So this shifts the graph up if your Q is positive. So you'll notice that now the asymptote which here when Q is 0 is was the x-axis, now your asymptote is some value for some positive y value. Okay, and if your Q is smaller than 0, then what happens? Do you see the year was X asymptote? The asymptote was X axis. Now what's happened is that it shifted the graph. So now we have a negative asymptote. And that asymptote is equal to the Q. So let's do an example or two just to practice what we know. So it says draw the graph and label the asymptotes and give the domain and range. Give the domain and range. So the first thing is we see that this is minus 2. So we know that there is an asymptote going through minus 2. Okay, we know that this is a positive graph, so I immediately know that I'm going to be drawing in this and this quadrant. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find out if we can find out where it cuts the x-axis and where it cuts the well, where it cuts the y-axis. So if we let um, if we let y equal naught. Okay, let's solve for x. If we let y equal 0, then do you agree that you've got 0 is equal to 4 over x minus 2? 4 over x minus 2, right? So therefore, do you agree that I can say 2 is equal to 4 over x, right? And therefore x is now 4 divided by 2 which equals 2. So that means that this graph is going to cut the x-axis at 2. And now we can basically draw it. So basically the graph is going to look something like that and it is going to go something like that because remember that we've only shifted it vertically so therefore the other asymptote which is the y-axis has remained there. So it says label the asymptotes so the first asymptote we've got here is that y is equal to minus 2. The other asymptote happens to be the y-axis where x equals 0. The domain now the domain is for every value of this graph from minus infinity to plus infinity, okay, but what does it not do? It does not touch the y-axis. Therefore the domain would be x is an element of real values but x does not equal naught and your range is going to be again from minus infinity all the way closer and closer to minus 2 and then from minus 2 all the way through to positive infinity. So yeah it would be y is an element of real values for y does not equal minus 2. Right let's do one more just to make sure we've got the gist of it. So again we're going to draw the graph and label the asymptotes and give the domain and range but this time you will notice two things. One is we've got a plus 2 which means my asymptote is now up here at plus 2. 
Secondly, I have a negative graph and what we know is that negative graphs are in the second and in the fourth quadrant, the second and the fourth quadrant. But if you don't remember that, remember you can just plot some points in to see what happens. So let's find out if or where it cuts the x-axis. So we're going to let y equal naught. So naught is equal to minus 4 over x plus 2. If I take that across, I get minus 2 is equal to minus 4 over x. And then if I cross multiply, I get x is equal to minus 4 divided by minus 2, which is then again 2. So we know it goes through here, which is great because that makes sense because then it looks like that, or well, smoother than that hopefully. And then it looks like that. And remember grade 11's one thing that you need to always try and do is just pick a point on this side and substitute it in so you can get a nice value here. So let's pretend that, I don't know, x equals minus 2. So if I let x equal minus 2 and I substitute into this point, okay, I would get um, y is equal to minus 4 over minus 2 plus 2 so that becomes 2 divided by 2 which is 4 which means that my graph okay let me just I'll tell you what let's do this properly and then instead of doing graph if I now had to plot this we would know it's going through x is minus 2 y is 4 so therefore the graph is actually going to look more like that than the rough drawing that I drew, which is actually better. And then you need to label that point. So you've got to say, okay, fine, x is going to be minus 2, 4. Right, so now we've spoken about the asymptote. Well, asymptote over here, remember that this is going to be y equals 2, and this is x equals 0. And now we've got to talk about domain and range. And again, your domain is how far across the x-plane does this graph reach? And do you agree it goes all the way from minus infinity to all the way to positive infinity, but it does not equal zero because that's one of our asymptotes. So we'd say that x is an element of real values, but x does not equal zero. And if we're talking about the range, Again, we've got y is an element of real values because it's on the real axes, but or the real coordinate system. But what does y not equal? And in this case, y's asymptote is y equals 2, therefore y does not equal 2. So do you see that so far what have we done? We've only shifted this graph up or down. We've had a vertical shift. Now we're going to do something new. We're going to have the new form of the graph where y is equal to a over x plus p plus q. Now we know that the a tells us which quadrant, so that tells us which quadrant and also gives us a feel for the, the amplitude. q shifts us up or down. So let's see what this x plus p does. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to substitute some points in. So we're going to draw 1, f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do, do you agree that that is the same as y is equal to 1 over x minus 2? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let, I'm going to let x equal 0. So now y is going to be 1 over 0 minus 2 which is now going to obviously be minus a half. So y is equal to minus a half. So what is it saying? It's saying it's cutting the y-axis at minus a half. So suddenly we are cutting our y-axis. If we look at the previous graph, we never cut the y-axis because the y-axis was one of the asymptotes and now suddenly we are cutting the y-axis. And the reason we're doing that is because what does this x minus 2 do? It actually shifts the graph over. It shifts the graph over. So what I want to do is now let, us, let x be different values. So let's let, we're going to let x equal, I don't know, 1. Okay, we let x be 1. So if we let x be 1, we've got 1 over 1 minus 2, which is actually 1 over minus 1, which equals negative 1. So therefore, we've got that when x equals 1, y equals minus 1. 
Okay, now we know this is a positive value, so we know that this quadrant is over here and over here. Okay, now what this is actually telling us is that this is telling us that it's moved this graph over and its new asymptote is at 2 is at 2. And how can we tell us that? If we say let x equal to 2, what do we get? We get y is equal to 1 over 2 minus 2, which is 1 over 0, which is undefined. And as soon as you have an undefined value, what do we know? We know that that is the asymptote. So now we've got a graph that is going through. It hasn't been shifted up or down. It's going through those points there, my apologies again for the terrible drawing, going through those points there and it's going through something up here, okay, because we know it's a positive graph which goes through quadrants one and three, but it does not touch, doesn't cross the x-axis at all, but now it crosses the y-axis because it's been shifted over by two. So let's find out where it would be, yeah, let's let x equal four, so if we let x equal 4, then we've got y is equal to 1 over 4 minus 2, which equals a half. So therefore, when x is 4, y is a half, so the graph is looking something like that. And obviously it never crosses that. Okay, so do you see that we've actually shifted this graph over to the right when we have x minus 2. Now, the other one that they want us to draw is g of x is equal to 1 over x plus 1. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, since we've, you're going to have this on a recording, you don't have to have it in front of you, I'm going to raise all this and I'm going to do the next graph on the same page so you can see what happens when we have a different shift. And this time we have y is equal to 1 over x plus 1. So let's look at this. This time I'm going to say, okay fine, let's do this again. Let us let x equal 0. Therefore we've got y is equal to 1 over 0 plus 1, which equals 1. So when x is naught, y is now 1. So do you see that we're now cutting the x-axis? Again, this is a positive graph, so therefore it should be going through quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. It's, let's do what we would normally do. Let's let x equal minus 1. Now you've got y is equal to 1 over minus 1 plus 1, which equals 0, 1 over 0, which equals undefined. So now we can see that our asymptote this time is when x equals minus 1. So our new asymptote is along this line here, this line here. So what has happened? We've actually shifted this graph over and I'm actually going to change color. I'm sorry, but I don't really like the purple again, so it's difficult to see with the blue. So you can see that now, that's a bit better, our asymptote is now along this line there of x equals minus 1, and our new graph has been shifted over to the left, okay? And if we want to, we need to find out where it's going to be going through here, so we can plot a point in. Let's let, let's let x equal minus 2, then you've got y is equal to 1 over minus 2 plus 1, which is 1 over minus 1, which is negative 1. So when x is minus 2, y is minus 1, so it is going to be going through this graph and it's going to be coming along, but not crossing this new asymptote. Okay, so that's your new hyperbola. So, do you see that your x is negative? When your x is negative, it has shifted the graph over to the right, but when x is positive, it's shifted the asymptote over to the 
left okay so that is what our new form does our P shifts it left and right and our Q shifts it up and down and your A tells you which quadrants to do so let's talk about the effects of A, P and Q. So if P is greater than 0, do you see that our vertical asymptote has been shifted over to the left on both times? There is our shifted over to the left. And if you go over here, you can see that if P is negative, then we have shifted it to the right. So left is what happens when our P is positive and to the right is negative. And again, if A is bigger than zero, then we're in the first and third quadrants, whereas if A is smaller than zero, we're in the second and fourth quadrants. And if Q is bigger than naught, then we shift it up, so that would be up. And if Q is smaller than naught, then we shift it down. So now let's do an example. It says Draw the following graph showing all the asymptotes and determine the domain and range. But now this makes things a little bit easier because now we know that plus 2 moves it up 2. So we know it's going to be here. Right. And remember, if this is plus 1, which way it is shifting? Let's go back for a second. If your P is positive, it's shifting it to the left. Okay, so it's shifting it to the left, so therefore it is going to go off to the left, so it's going to be minus 1, okay, so therefore your asymptotes are going to be y is equal to 2 and x equals minus 1. And the next thing we need to do is we need to now think about where this graph is going to be. It's a positive A, so we know it's going to be in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. Grade 11s, please don't draw little x's like I'm doing here. I'm just showing you which quadrants it's going to be. So we know it's going to be in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. And it's because it's been shifted over to the left, we know it's going to cut the y-axis and because it's been shifted up we know it's going to cast the x-axis so we can solve for that so we know that y is equal to 2 over x plus 1 plus 2 and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let x equal 0 therefore we've got y is equal to 2 over 0 plus 1 plus 2 which is 2 plus 2, which is 4. So now we know that this graph is cutting through 4 and it's doing something along the lines like that. And we just have to label that point as 0, 4. And now we want to find out where it cuts the x-axis. So we're going to let y equal 0. So we let y equal 0. So we go 0 is equal to 2 over x plus 1 plus 2, we take the 2 across, we've got minus 2 is equal to 2 over x plus 1. We can cross multiply and go x plus 1 is equal to 2 divided by minus 2. Therefore, x plus 1 is equal to negative 1. Therefore, x is going to equal negative 2. So it's going to crow through there. And then if we just want to kind of draw the curve in and join the dots and remember that that point there is going to be minus 2 0 minus 2 0 right so that's the shift okay we haven't done domain and range yet so your domain your domain again is going to be all the way through from the negative infinity all the way through to the positive infinity except except for where x equals negative 1. So yeah, we could say just that x is an element of real values, but x cannot equal negative 1, which you could, could have told you anyway for the simple reason that if this equals negative 1, what do we get? We get 0, which means it's undefined. Right, easy peasy. Let's do range. Range, remember, is your y values for which this exists, and it goes all the way to positive infinity, all the way to negative infinity, except where y equals 2. So you're going to have y is an element of real values for y does not equal 2. Right. Let's do one more just to make sure you guys have got to grips with this. Okay. So this time, and let's just change this color. I'm getting a little bit bored of the green. 
super bowl. We've got p of x is equal to minus 4 over x plus 1 minus 3. Right, grade 11s, let's see. Obviously, this tells us that the graph has been shifted down by 3. So we're going to go. Okay, this tells us that it's been shifted which way? It's been shifted to the left by 1. Okay, it's been shifted to the left by 1. So that is going to be a ch -ch 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 -ch. again. Shifted to the left by 1. Okay, right. And then it's a negative graph, which means it's in that quadrant and that quadrant there. Okay, now again, since we've shifted both the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, which I'm going to label quickly, that there is y is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to negative 1. And because I now know that, I know that it's probably going to have cut, well, I know it's going to have cut the x-axis and I know it's going to have cut the y-axis. So I'm going to solve for that. So we've got y is equal to minus 4 over x plus 1 minus 3. Okay, we're going to first let x equal 0. So we've got y is equal to minus 4 over 0 plus 1 minus 3. So it becomes minus 4 minus 3 which is negative 7. So I can put that down there, minus 7 and I can draw my graph like that, more or less. Please don't make it pointy like mine is. And that point there is going to be 0, minus 7. And now we want to find out where it cuts the x-axis. So we can let y equal 0. So we're going to say let y equal 0. Always let the teacher know what you're doing. So 0 is equal to minus 4 over x plus 1 minus 3. When I take that across, I get 3 is equal to negative 4 over x plus 1 cross multiply I get x plus 1 is equal to negative 4 over 3 and then obviously when I take that across it becomes minus 1 therefore and this is already minus 1 and a third so it becomes x is equal to minus 2 and a third so it's minus 2 and a third so it's about over there and I'm just going to draw it up like this Okay, so again, do you see that it doesn't cross these asymptotes? It tends towards it but never crosses it, okay? And then what do we need to do? It says, oh, and I have to label this point here, which is going to be minus 2 and a third, 0. And now we need to talk about the domain and the range, the domain and the range. So again, the domain is going to be what? The domain is going to be all the x values except, except for x is equal to negative 1. Therefore, it's going to be x is an element of real values for x does not equal negative 1. And then the range is going to be the same type of thing, but this time for y, the range is going to be the y is an element of real values, but what can y not equal? Y cannot equal minus 3. Right, grade 11s, that's it for hyperbolas. We now taught you how to shift it up and down, left to right, and which quadrants for positive or negative. So please go practice, 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 and then do the assessments at the end of the week. Bye.